Total length, 880 mm. Barrel length, 415 mm. Magazine, up to 45 rounds. Cartridge, 7.62 mm. Rate of fire, 600 rounds per minute. Effective range, up to 300 meters. When the safety lever is in its uppermost position, the gun is locked. It cannot be fired or loaded. The safety lever can be moved to select between automatic firing mode and semi-automatic firing mode. In its topmost position, the safety lever blocks both the trigger and the disconnector. In this position the trigger cannot be pressed. In the middle position, only the disconnector is blocked. And in the lowest position, it allows both the trigger and the disconnector to move freely. Pressing the trigger releases the hammer. Then hammer strikes the firing pin. The firing pin is a small metal rod that slides in the bolt. The bolt holds the cartridge in place. The firing pin strikes the rear of a cartridge. In a cartridge, you'll notice that it has three main parts, primer, gunpowder, and a projectile or bullet. The primer ignites the gunpowder. Then the expanding gases pushes the bullet out of the barrel at high speed. The expanding gases rise up through the nozzle, pushing back the gas piston. This motion causes the bolt carrier to move backward. Therefore, it is referred to as gas-operated reloading. The bolt carrier moves backward, which causes the bolt to rotate and the discharged case is returned. Let's take a closer look at the bolt's rotation. The bolt revolves in a clockwise direction as the bolt carrier advances. It spins counterclockwise as it moves backward. Let's examine how it slides with the aid of the bolt's sliding lug. The sliding lug moves in the region shown in red. An ejector is present to the left of bolt. The fired case hits the ejector as it returns with the bolt, and it is expelled from the gun. As the bolt carrier moves back it pushes the hammer down. The hammer is then caught by the disconnector. The recoil spring pushes the bolt carrier forward. The trigger has been pressed so far. As soon as the trigger is released, the hammer is captured by the trigger. A new round is placed into the chamber as the bolt carrier advances, and the bolt is locked. Let's examine the process of the bolt locking. The two locking lugs, locking lug 1 and locking lug 2 helps to lock the bolt in the front trunion. The bolt rotates to lock in front trunion. It is known as a rotating bolt locking mechanism for this reason. Let's look at it from a different angle. The red area denotes the location where two lugs lock in place. Let's check out the automatic mode right now. The selector lever blocks the disconnector. When the trigger is pressed, hammer is released. However, the disconnector no longer captures the hammer. This procedure keeps going till the trigger is released. The auto sear makes sure that the bolt is locked before the hammer hits the firing pin. The auto sear locks the hammer. The bolt carrier then moves the auto sear back to its initial position. The hammer then hits the firing pin. Aiming is done with the help of rear sight and as well as front side. The number markings on rear sight helps us to adjust the aim according to the range of the target. 100 meters with the 1 setting, 200 meters with the 2 setting, and so on. It has numbers up to 10, but it has a maximum effective range of only 300 meters or setting 3. A rifle must be zeroed 
in order for the shooter to accurately aim at their target from a specific distance. To adjust the windage the sight is moved to left or right. To adjust its elevation the sight is moved up or down. A front sight adjustment tool is used for this purpose. If we want the bullet impact to move left, then the front sight should be moved to right. And if we want it to move right, then the front sight should be moved to left. If we want the bullet impact to move up, the front sight must be screwed in or down. If we want it to move down, front sight is screwed out or up. At 100 meters from the target, shifting the front sight 1 millimeter to the left, right, up, or down causes a 26 centimeter variation in the point of impact. The two basic accessories are a bayonet for close combat situations and a sling belt strap to carry the gun on the shoulder.